Hey guys, it's Silenced and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you 10 combat money making methods. And specifically, this is my top 10, so they aren't really the best 10 methods, but I did take into account the GP per hour and requirements for each method when making this top 10. So anyway, let's get on with the video. At number 10, we have Ganodermic Beasts. So Ganodermic Beasts do require 95 Slayer, so it is a pretty high requirement, but they are pretty easy to kill, and you can expect 2 mil per hour at least, maybe upwards of 3 mil, depending on the drops. They are really well known for their Ganodermic drops, so they drop the Polypore Stick and the Ganodermic's Boots and Gloves. They also drop Ganodermic Flakes, which is where you will make most of your money. So this is an uncommon drop, and you can get between 1 and 298 flakes, which equates to 261 to 77 K GP. One other thing to note is that you do require 95 Slayer and 60 Magic to receive this task. And at number 9, we have Ascension Creatures, specifically Rurarius and Gladi. So these monsters are found in the Monastery of Ascension, located between the Feldip Hills and the Mobilizing Armies. You can expect to make around 2 mil per hour killing these, and they do require 81 Slayer to kill. So Ascension Creatures are really well known for their Ascension Key drops, which vary from 150k to 500k in value. And if you do decide to kill the Gladi, these also drop a lot of rune, or rune items, so if you bring the Spring Cleaner, that would be really beneficial here. Um, but if you do want AFK, Rory is what you want to kill. As you can see right here, I am pretty AFK with the Aggression Potion and the Supreme Overload. So it is pretty easy to AFK them and just pick up the keys whenever they're dropped because that is pretty much the only profitable thing about the Rurari. At number 8 we have Gargoyles and Gargoyles only require 75 Slayer so it is slightly lower than the other methods. And with this you can expect to make about 2.5 mil per hour they drop a lot of rune salvage drops, which is where you make most of the money. They also drop a granite mall, which is fairly rare, so really you can expect all your money to come from the rune salvage. So if you have a spring cleaner, definitely bring that. If not, then just high elk the items. And one important thing about gargoyles is that you need a rock hammer to kill them if you do not already have the quicker blow ability unlocked with your Slayer Master. So this ability costs 400 Slayer points so if you do have this and you're expecting to actually kill a lot of gargoyles I would advise buying it because it is really beneficial and makes gargoyles a lot faster to kill and more GP per hour. At number 7 we have Corrupted Creatures. So Corrupted Creatures get you about 3 mil per hour, but you do require a Slayer level from 88 for the Corrupted Scorpions and up to 103 for the Corrupted Workers. Right now I am killing some Corrupted Dusk Devils, so these would require 97 Slayer. All of the Corrupted Creatures do have their own drop table, although they also drop some of the same drops such as the Corrupted Gem and the Kopesh, as well as the Key to Crossing and Vital Sparks. So really, you will make a lot of money off the Vital Sparks, which is dropped by any Corrupted Creature, and then they do have their own specific drop table, such as the Corrupted Dust Devils drop Large Plated Rune Salvage, which is really profitable. They drop 1 to 2, which is 30 to 61k. Every creature has their own unique drop table. Some are better than others. I really like the Corrupted Dusk Devils, but overall, killing any Corrupted creature, you could expect right around 3 mil per hour. At number 6, I have Spiritual Mages, 
and these require 83 Slayer to kill, and you can expect about, about 3 mil per hour. And they do drop a lot of alkable items, such as the battle staffs, so they drop the air, earth, fire, and water battle staffs, as well as a noted regular battle staff drop. So all the most of these alkables alk for about 8k, and then they also drop a medium bladed rune salvage, which is a 20k drop. They can drop dragon gauntlets, dragon boots, soul runes, which are really profitable. And pretty much every one of their drops is a, a pretty good drop. Most of them are noted or alkable. So you can stay here for really long and just camp them. It is a really good method. I remember when I was a mid-level, I'd camp these and make probably about 10 mil at a time, spending just a few hours here. So it is a really, really good method. And I would definitely advise you guys checking it out. Uh, again, it does require 83 Slayer, but definitely worth getting. Um, they're pretty easy to kill, they're weak to range, um, so definitely check it out if you do have the level requirement. And at number 5 we have Abyssal Demons. So Abyssal Demons is kind of an interesting creature. They do require 85 Slayer, but in order to actually maximize this profit per hour and get 3, maybe even 4 mil per hour, you do need to have near max stats, so you're going to need curses and overloads, and you're going to need some high-end gear, especially a high-end two-hand weapon like a scythe or even a dragon rider lance would work here. But anyway, the method that you're really going to want to use is go to the top floor of the Slayer Tower, and as you can see here, I have an aggression potion active, and I also have an overload active and my curses, especially soul split, which is the most important. So now I just use all my abilities, my area abilities that does area damage such as hurricane and smash. And you can just camp here and pick up all the drops every few minutes for some really awesome gains. One other thing that I should note here is that you can get some really insane XP per hour. Um, right now, I think I'm getting about 800k XP per hour, combat XP per hour, which is a really, really in insane and probably the best combat XP method in the game. And at number 4, we have Frost Dragons. So, Frost Dragons do require 85 Dungeoneering to access the Asgarnian Ice Dungeon Resource Dungeon. And so, this is a, a fairly high requirement. But uh, Frost Dragons do make you a lot of profit per hour, up to 3.5 mil. Um, their best drop is the always, they always drop Frost Dragon Bones, which are worth around 12k right now. And they do drop one medium bladed rune salvage, so you, you could bring the Spring Cleaner. They do drop a huge plated adamant salvage as well, so you could out this for about 10k also. But overall, you will be making most of your money off the Frost Dragon Bones. And one tip to improve the profit per hour here is that you can obtain the upgraded Bone Crusher. So this upgraded Bone Crusher allows you to automatically pick up the bones and it goes straight to your inventory, which then you can use a Winter Storage Scroll to teleport it to the bank or Magic Note Paper. Um, the only hard part about this is that the upgrade of Bone Crusher does require, obviously, the 34,000 Dungeoneering tokens to purchase in the first place, but then to upgrade it, you will need 25,000 Chimes and 25 Tide 2. At number 3, I have Eretz, and Eretz require 92 Slayer to kill. Um, but they do make you up to 4 mil per hour. And they have some pretty good drops. They drop a lot of rune salvage, uh, huge and large rune salvage, which can be alked uh, for pretty good value. And they also drop a medium spiky rune salvage, which can be alked for about 24k. Um, they also have a pretty good coin drop, which is 2,000 to 10,000 coins. And they drop a serenic scales and... They are really famous for their Razorback Gauntlet drop, 
Although this is a really rare drop, and I've probably killed a few thousand of them and only obtained two or three of these drops, but they uh, they are worth two mil, so if you do get them, it would really boost up your GP per hour. But anyway, you can expect around four mil per hour on average while killing air runs. And at number two, we have a moose buzz. So moose buzz requires 76 slayer to kill, and they also require the completion of the Fate of the Gods quest and the Light Within. Moose Buzz are weak to ancient magic spells, so you should definitely use those. I'm using Blood Barrage right now, and this is really useful. You should also bring your Spring Cleaner because they drop a few Rune Salvage drops, which can be automatically alked with the use of the Spring Cleaner. So you can kill a lot of moose plus per hour, especially if you are using the aggression potion. I'm not using that right now in this clip, but you can kill them really fast with it, especially while using ancient magics. So if you want the best GP per hour, that is what you will have to do. Um, and then use your area effect spells on the moose plus in order to maximize your profit. And at number one, we have one of my favorite creatures, which is the Lava Strike Worm. The Lava Strike Worm does have a high requirement in 94 Slayer. Another downside with Lava Strike Worms is that they are located in the Deep Wilderness around level 34 to 41 Wilderness. So you can kind of expect a few PKers. Uh, while I was actually recording a clip, a PKer did come. I did get away pretty easily, but you do need to keep your eyes open for that. Overall, you can expect around 7 mil per hour killing lob strike worms as they drop searing ashes every kill, which is a 36k drop. And they can also drop some rune salvage drops, as well as some other really good drops, like as like Onyx Bolts, um, which is a 200k drop. Noted Searing Ashes, which is about 200k. They drop uh, Black Dragon Hide, which is about 30 to 40k. So overall, every drop you could kind of expect about uh, 50k to 60k, just in common items. And then they do have the very rare Worm Heart, Worm Scalp, and Worm Spike drops. So these are worth 23 uh, 19 and 13 mil each respectively, which is really valuable drop and really boosts your GP per hour um, up to the 7 mil per hour. Uh, one really important thing that you, you could do to maximize your profit is bring the Wilderness Sword uh, for, so you need the Elite Wilderness Tasks completed to get this, but this allows your Searing Ashes drops to be noted so you can stay there for longer. Although make sure you do bank fairly frequently just in case a PK or does come. Anyway, that is it for this video. I really hope you can find a few of these methods in this top 10 that you can use to make a little bit more money. But anyway, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more RuneScape 3 content. I will also be linking my Discord server in the description below. So if you want to check that out and join it, the link will be down there. Uh, but anyway guys, that is it for this video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.